So the big hype in the astrophotography world this weekend is AstroSharp versus Blur Exterminator. Now I'm in the camp of why not just use both? I think the developer and everybody else would kind of agree with that as of right now as well. So let's talk about it. I'm Chad, this is the Easy Astro Images channel and we are gonna play with some photons today. So literally as I was recording this video, I saw that Queeve the Lazy Geek posted a video, had to stop and watch that about this new tool called AstroSharp. So AstroSharp is a sharpening tool. Um, I highly recommend that you go and watch. You can see um, Rich's stuff here on Deep Space Astro, and he has a link here. Uh, the developer, Deep Sky Detail, will tell you all about what's going on with this tool, what it does good, what it does bad things like that. And I'll show you some of that here as well. Most important thing to remember, of course, this thing is free. He's got all the instructions on how to install it. Rich does too. So we won't cover any of that. I'm going to show you what I've done and where I think it really fits in well with, you know, a lot of our Astro images. So the whole point of this tool is to sharpen and it does not do the stuff that Blur Exterminator does, you know, doesn't really correct stars very well. You get like really bad ringing and all that kind of stuff. Hopefully that will get all better in the future. It also works in nonlinear data. So after you've stretched it, so, and you got to really have really good data for it to work with right now, because this AI model is only trained on like 50,000 images where blur exterminator now is over 2 million and counting. So you got to have some good looking stuff for it to work with, but you know, this is what the tool looks like right here. So it's just pretty simple. All you do is just drop in your image here, let it run. Sometimes it takes like three to four minutes. Um, you know, I got a 12, 900 K and DDR five and everything else inside of here. I don't hear the fans even kicking on from the CPU. So I'm assuming that, it's not using like multi-core or, or pressing the processor very hard, which is kind of a good thing. But of course, if there was some kind of uh, multi-threading acceleration or GPU acceleration, this would go a lot faster. But hey, we're all getting spoiled by CUDA acceleration and stuff now. So in my opinion, what this thing really is where it shines at and what it can replace is the various tedious operations after you've already like stretched an image and you're played with your processing and all that stuff. And you're just trying to figure out how to clean things up and sharpen it. Now, a lot of us might take an image and dump it into like Photoshop or camera raw and play with those magic sliders. Super easy. You know, you can really over bake your images. You can do all kinds of stuff um, inside of PixInsight. You can do things like um, the MLT sharpness um, and stuff. It's very easy to do, but you have to create multiple masks and go through and do it that way. But you get some pretty good results. Um, if we take a look at an image here of using the usual MLT sharpen stuff versus the exact same image that we ran through the actual Astro Sharp, um, you can see that the image on the left here is the normal PI way, and the image over here is the Astro Sharp way. Now, this galaxy up here looks a lot better than the one over here. These down here look a little overcooked, but you know, if we zoom in, you can definitely see that there is, you know, a improvement to both, and you know, you gotta zoom in pretty hard to see some of this stuff, especially when you're using a wide, uh, small scope like me with, uh, the actual red, you know, with the red cap 51, but, uh, you know, that's a pretty good example, but you know, there's things that I was saying that you just don't want to get into. I have found the best way to actually work with this is to, uh, remove the stars and do things that way. So if you do starless images, so you can see this is kind of like my PixInsight image here where I did use Blur Exterminator, stretched it, and then left it at that. And then this is the exact same thing except for I ran it through AstroSharp after 
that process. And you can see that we got a lot more detail over here with the Astro Sharp image than the one that is over here with just Blur Exterminator applied in the linear phase. And it's pretty much the same story uh, throughout any images that we look at. Um, if we look at, let's see, I have a sharpened uh, lion right here. And where is its counterpart? Again, pretty much the same story. So we've got a lot more sharpening and detail going on over here than we do over here on this side. And this was the same treatment. So basically, I load up the image in Graxpert, do my background extraction, bring it into PixInsight, do my color calibrations or whatever, do my blur exterminator, stretch it, pull the stars out, and then take the starless image, play with it a little bit in PI or whatever, put it into Astro Sharp, get the sharpened image, and then that's where we come back to what we have right here. So again, if I wanted to do this in PixInsight, I would have to go through and do all of the other kind of operations uh, to kind of get, you know, what I want. And, you know, here we go. I mean, this is what we're looking at if you just run it with stars and you can see that there's a lot of ringing and stuff going on. So again, I would totally recommend to pull your stars out and do this thing from a starless point of view. And I think I have um, some, yep, there's another one M31 that I ran right through without pulling the stars. And then here is the lion. And after I added the stars back in after doing the sharpening. So that's definitely the way that you would want to run this tool, at least right now that I'm finding. And same thing here with uh, M31. You can see that we just popped the stars back in there and we still were able to keep and maintain all of that detail that we had there at the start. So bottom line, what I am finding out is... You can do Blur Exterminator first to take care of your stars, which I would always do because I'm totally oversampled, drizzle, all that stuff. Get that done, do my color calibration, do my noise reduction, stretch it, pull the stars out, play with saturations, do my fun stuff, put the starless image into Astro Sharp get that ran through, bring it back into whatever, and then go from there. And it's probably actually what I'm going to do because it's working very well. And like I said, it's a lot easier than doing the tedious thing of the multilinear transform where you have to pull the luminance mask out, modify that, make an unsharp mask, do that, take another copy of the luminance max mask make an mlt mask and then do mlt and then you use a fancy pixel math formula that combines all three of those images together and then you go into lrgb combination and then add that and if you want to know how to do that i can basically just point you right to uh one of sean nielsen's uh videos um, on his Invisible Dark uh, channel. If you just go to YouTube and search for Picks and Sight Sharpening, um, it'll come up, and it is uh, this video right here. And this is pretty much what I've been using for quite a while now. And you still might want to try it on top of this as well. These are your photos. You can do what you want to do with them. We are all new and playing with all this stuff and it's an exciting time. That's what it matters most. So enjoy yourself, have fun. And uh, you know, this makes things easier and that's what we try to do. So this eliminates a lot of steps. So hopefully they can keep on going with that or maybe it will push Russ to work on the stellar sharpening 
after we've already creamed our images by stretching them and oversaturating them and all that stuff, and hopefully being able to recover some of that lost detail. So one can only hope, click, 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 and we're done, right? That would just be amazing. Now, if we could just get rid of the clouds and the smoke and we would be all good. So we will see you guys later. Appreciate you. Peace.